Sharon is working on getting in. Sharon is working on getting in. Okay. Sharon is working on getting in. We are now live streaming. Awesome. And just so everyone knows when we're being live streamed, you're only included if your camera is on. So for commission members, it would be nice if your cameras were on, but I understand if you choose not to put them on. <laughs> Amanda, if you want to get started, I think we are good to go. Okay, um, great. All right, so I guess we'll call the meeting to order. Um, and I I mean, that's our, our first step here. And then uh, we also do need to do a, a roll call. So Elizabeth, I, I think you usually help us out with that piece. So Stanwick is absent. Bob is here. Bob, Bob Ike is also here internationally. Um, Leslie is here. Stefan is absent. Amanda is here. Myself is here. And Paula Jones is here as a member of the community. Great. All right. Thank you. And the first uh, piece on the agenda is old business. I don't know if we have anything that's unresolved that we want to um, go through before we jump into. I know we have a couple of things to discuss in new business. Um, Bob Ferger, I did see your email um, about some projects. I, I went into the shared document to... Um, we have like the, the Google Sheet for potential locations and potential projects. And I started to kind of build out that potential projects sheet um, with some of the ideas that we've discussed. And then there's definitely room for, you had um, a few other things on there, so. Um, thank, thank you so much, Amanda. I, I went back, Elizabeth uh, sent a, a notice out. I don't know if it went to, went to everyone but she pointed out where I could find the project tab at the bottom. So uh, thank cool. you for doing that, uh, Amanda. And uh, now I'll know and everyone else uh, where to uh, where to update it. Yeah, and, and feel free to like, if people wanna change how that um, potential projects, the way I laid it out here, Elizabeth's sharing the screen, um, project idea, location, you know, if there's a partnership involved, if there's funding, um, if that's applicable. Um, so, I, I mean, if there's other ways we want to organize it, I'm not married to how it is, please um, feel free to, to adjust as, as needed. But I just figured this was at least to get us started, right? No, I think you did a great job, Amanda. Again, thank you. I do have a question for, for the whole commission, which is uh, thus far, this, this short list is, uh, I'll just call it hands-on projects. In other words, things that we would like to see materialize. Uh, do we want to add on this list or maybe have another list that I would ask someone to set up the file, <laughs> Amanda or Elizabeth, uh, which is uh, uh, agenda items that are ongoing for the commission, such as I listed in my long list this morning. Uh, we want to, excuse me for a second. <coughs> Just had a scratch in my throat. Uh, we want to do an inventory of art, art and artists in town. Well, that's not really a project uh, of this nature, you know. Uh, uh, how do we want to uh, uh, accumulate those things? Yeah, I think that's but, a great idea, Bob. 
We could add another um, tab right to this working document, um, but I don't know what we would label that. Ongoing agenda items to consider, is, is that summing it up? I think that's sufficient, we would all know. Okay. Because uh, uh, several that I listed, uh, you know, and I uh, obviously always uh, encourage and invite everyone else to chime in too. Uh, I'm not in charge, but uh, the issue of 501c3, whether we do it ourselves or we affiliate with someone, uh, the inventory of artists in town, and things of that nature. Uh, I think that those could all go under uh, ongoing. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right, so I added that, and I guess the only thing we would have to make sure we remember is to not get these three things confused. Um, yeah. but we, can, we can keep that organized. Sure. I wonder if, could you just go back for a quick second, uh, Elizabeth? I appreciate it. I, I wonder uh, if as a group, <laughs> we could come up with an adjective for the one in the middle, potential projects, maybe potential some kind of project that uh, lets us know that it, um, uh, it's, it's actual, I'm, I'm using a, just the word material here, you know, something that we wanna see realized tangibly. Uh, is there an adjective we all wanna put in there? It would make them distinct. I see what you're saying, Bob, like potential, I'm, I'm just throwing this out there, public art projects, you know, like that makes it very- That might do it. Yeah. Like exactly what it is, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, why don't we do that? Yeah. yeah. Great. Cool. Then we'll, we'll all be able to keep track of that. And I'm sure there'll be over the course of our year and years, uh, a long list of agenda items, uh, which go along with that. So, yeah. Yeah, and it stands out, you know, there's some things that are public art and then there are some things that are more, yeah, like I internal administrative, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah. operational. And right. maybe one day we'll have a tab of finished projects. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> we're trying to make a list of easy lifting for now, so maybe we can get a couple out of the new year. Yeah. That'd be great, that'd be great. Okay, cool. Any other old business on the table? Okay, um, I guess we can hop into new business. Um, so the, the first thing. Yeah, go ahead, Bob. Excuse me, Amanda, we need to approve the minutes. We oh. need to approve the minutes from the last meeting. Yes, yes. I think we have that further on the agenda, um, okay. Robert. But I mean, we can, yeah, yeah, we have it further on the agenda. Thank you, though. Yeah, you'll 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 keep me honest here. I appreciate that. Um, all right. So in new business, we have um, the utility pole um, proposal at Farmington River Park, as well as the meeting schedule for 2022. So um, with the utility pole, we we all saw an email that came through. Um, Paula is here um, to share some thoughts on that. Right, and hopefully Sharon will be able to jump in and um, join us because um, she has visuals, which always help, <laughs> just, just to share the concept. Um, but basically, um, CEC and BBC have, you know, try to partner on various projects. We've been doing trees for Bloomfield. Um, we've been working on, you know, various things throughout the, the past year in particular. Um, Sharon chairs the beautification committee. I'm the interim chair for the conservation energy and environment committee. Uh, I also sit on the recreation committee, um, the Bloomfield recreation committee. And I also am one of Bloomfield's representatives. And this is a mouthful, I apologize. I apologize. I'm one of Bloomfield's representatives on the lower Farmington River Salmon Brook Wild and Scenic Committee. Um, a little known fact is that, uh, at least I think it's little known, <laughs> the lower Farmington River, actually most of the Farmington River in Connecticut, has a wild and scenic river designation. Okay, so Sharon is trying to get in and Rachel was helping her. That's the latest update there. Um, so that's, 
that's really kind of a big deal because it's not easy to get a wild and scenic river designation. The effort to do that started um, in 2008, 2009 to get the lower river designated. It finally happened in 2019. It's a national, it's a national designation. And to demonstrate um, why the river deserves that kind of special recognition, you have to um, show what's special about it. One of the things that is special about the river is the rich um, cultural landscape and the long history in terms of population use of the river. And um, the, river, the river has been used by Native Americans for about 13,000 years. And there's actually a nationally historic site in Bloomfield <laughs> called Indian Hill in the northern part of town, not too far from the Farmington River Park, that was a seasonal fishing village. Um, so like I said, it's kind of a big deal. It dates to about 5,000 years ago. Uh, it was excavated, you know, there was an archeological dig back, I think in the early nineties. Um, so basically, you know, the Native Americans were kind of the first fishermen in Connecticut. <laughs> they were the first people to fish the river. The Farmington River Park is this wonderful resource that we have. And um, Sharon's gonna talk a bit more about how very, you know, we're trying to really reactivate that park. The, there's a master plan for that park now. And one of the things that, you know, we want to promote and get people doing and taking advantage of in the park is fishing. <laughs> um, Cause it's a very kind of safe place to be able to access the river. And we're hoping to get youth out there. You know, th there's, there's lots of good things going on with respect to moving that forward. Um, so, you know, Sharon's got this, it turns out that the BBC got a small grant um, working with the town, that they helped the town obtain this grant from the Hartford Audubon Society to do a little bit of cleanup work at the trailhead and at the entrance to the parking lot for this Farmington River Park. So they did a bunch of plantings, they really cleaned it up, they worked closely with DPW, it looks really terrific. And there's this, what I call orphaned telephone pole <laughs> sitting there, <laughs> not used, and um, it either could be removed or, you know, from an environmental perspective, it could be recycled or upcycled. So the concept is, can we create a piece of public art? It's just very early conceptual stages. And, um, you know, might we honor the Native Americans who were the early fishermen um, in that art? And so, you know, she's got an image. Um, we haven't fleshed it out, you know, much beyond that. I will say, because I'm on this um, Wild and Scenic Committee representing Bloomfield, we're in the process of um, working on budgets for the 23 f 2023 fiscal year. We're trying to get projects for the current fiscal year. Um, I've started promoting the idea of, can we do something around public art? And I mean, this lower river has like nine towns represented in it, but there has been um, a lot of attention paid to the Native Americans recently, in part because of that really amazing discovery a couple of years ago in Avon. And I don't know if you've heard about this. They found a paleo Indian site that dates back about 12,500 years. They were working on a bridge. And I mean, this is like, this made international headlines. So the National Park Service is keen on kind of promoting that heritage. And, um, you know, maybe this is a way we could tap into it. Um, and, you know, this is all super preliminary, but, um, you know, Sharon is trying to get in and she does have an image to share with you. But the, the idea would be, you know, this, this is a good way to upcycle <laughs> a telephone pole, um, sort of make the connection with fishing and how we want to reactivate the park. And uh, I'll stop with that. Thanks, Paula. That was great.
background. Um, and as we wait for um, Sharon to, to get in, I mean, maybe if there's commission members that have any discussion or questions around that, and then, you know, if we still need time for Sharon, we can, we can jump around and come back to this if we have to. Um, oh, uh, I had a, oh, 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 please go ahead, Elizabeth. And, and um, who after. created the image? Who created the image? Sharon created the image. And and it's just a preliminary image. She was just trying to say, here's a picture. You know, I think you've seen the image because she shared it with you. Um, she just took a picture of the area that's been replanted and kind of slapped an image over it. It's not very authentic because I noticed it's got cephalopods in it. <laughs> it's got fish in it. Um, you know, we would, we would want the artwork, at least I'm, I'm speaking for myself, I think it's important that the artwork um, be authentic. And what the Native Americans were fishing for at Indian, or what they were processing at Indian Hill were an, what, what are called anadromous fish. These are, these are like salmon, shad. These are the fish that, that lay their eggs in fresh water, swim out to the ocean, and then come back to spawn. So the, the fish that we're talking about, you know, if you had an image with fish in it, would be you know salmon and shad and things like that. But uh, may, go ahead, uh, uh, please finish, Paula. Uh, I no, have that, a couple of comments. Uh, as the commission level here, first yeah. of all, uh, I think it, it's a very exciting concept, which ties in many things, at least in my view, that we're trying to do. Uh, uh, emphasize Bloomfield, its unique character. The history here is is a win. Uh, it's uh, not not to demean it in any way, but it's a very simple and a small project. So it could be achieved <laughs> and could be something of a signature for us. Uh, mm -hmm. And it, you'll know that I put in in our little uh, list projects like this and, and similar to it. So there may be other places around town that have some local character, we'd like to uh, replicate the concept, if not the artwork. Uh, I, I go back to, you know, learning things from neighboring communities. As you all know, uh, the town of West Hartford benefited from uh, a private initiative by the uh, uh, West Hartford Art League. They commissioned, I believe it's 10, uh, a decorative uh, a bus shelters uh, and by professional artists. Uh, and I would, um, all due respect to Sharon, who I know quite well, I would like to put out for the commission that this could be a project we solicit uh, professional art uh, submissions on, uh, not to make it a, a year long contest, but but something that's a, a little wider and broader than uh, than the people on on the committees and the commissions, uh, I think it could be a, a marvelous signature uh, project for us. Uh, I do have a simple question, and I will always plead ignorance. Where is the uh, Farmington River Park in Bloomfield, and and how do you access it? So if if you look, it's a it's a wonderful question because people have a hard time finding it, and we're, we're trying to change that. If you look at a map of Bloomfield mm -hmm. and you look at the very top of the map where um, Bloomfield borders East, Hart, uh, East Granby at the East very Granby. top, yeah. the Farmington River forms the boundary between East Granby and um, Bloomfield. Okay. So up in that corner is where the Farmington River Park is. The park actually... Um, straddles the town line with Windsor. So we, we actually own some land in, in Windsor. Um, and this Indian Hill site is a bit north of that. Um, the, the place they fished was where the old Spoonville Dam was that got taken out a few years ago because it was so darn dangerous. Uh -huh. um, so that, that's kind of the area we're talking about. The way you get to it is you, um, the way you get to it is you go up 180, you go up, um, if you're going up Blue Hills Avenue, right, Blue Hills, the, then what you do is um, there's an exit for Tunxis Avenue or Tunxis Avenue Extension, I think. It's like, it's like the last exit um, 
it's it's where 189 and 187 come together, where Blue Hills and Tonks' Avenue come in, and you're heading up towards um, Terrafield. Okay, there's an exit right there. Um, uh, where, where, okay. the Anna, where the Anna Grace Crack School is, it's in that area where the new Anna Grace um, Crack Academy is. Uh, that's where the park is. And um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a little known secret. We've had this park for something like 26 years. Um, we haven't, the town hasn't put you know, much into it. And um, so, it, you know, we, we, like I said, we wanna change that. Can I just make one comment to your point about um, soliciting other artists and all this kind of thing? Um, yeah, I think Sharon was just trying to sort of give, give a concept to present something. Sure, um, sure. One thing I will, I just want to add in terms of the, the Wild and Scenic Committee, um, I'm trying to promote the notion of public art because I think it's a real effective way to uh, educate and reach out to people. Um, you know, and, and, you know, some of this stuff can be very dry, but I think visual appealing images really catch people's attention. So that's why I think if you want to make peer, people aware of how special this river is, one way of doing it is through public art. Um, and so perhaps the commission <laughs> needs to be aware of small grant. I mean, there are small grant opportunities through the Wild and Scenic River um, Committee. So I, I, I want to point that out. The National Park Service is also very keen on the idea of authenticity and making sure that the, the Native peoples who still live here, you know, to the degree we can be including them and they're part of any kind of broader program we do around the these amazing sites, um, you know, th that they're included that. So I just offer that as a piece of information. Well, I think that's terrific and, and certainly fits in with with our our, I think, commission vision and individual thoughts that there are, uh, I mean, certainly uh, in a very major way, we have been emphasizing Black Lives Matter, uh, but uh, there are so many communities within Bloomfield that we want to um, promote. And uh, this would be a wonderful one. I think no one except perhaps your group is talking about it right now. Uh, so uh, I would endorse that. Uh, I throw out for comment, and this is an ongoing <coughs> concern, uh, and maybe Amanda, you're the, the key uh, person uh, who is knowledgeable on this. If there's grant money available, how we promote a project, even as small as this, to become eligible for a grant from someone when they can't make a grant to the commission. We can't be, uh, you know, a, uh, uh, what is the term for it in grant making? I think, um, anyway, we can't uh, receive the funds and then pass them along. So we have to have some kind of organization set up that can do that, whether it's state or federal or, or even a local uh, uh, contributor. Uh, this is one small prototype. We're going to run into this issue over and over and over, which is, Great idea, how does it get funded? Because no one can give money to us as a group. So, and that doesn't concern you, Paula, except incidentally, if we wanted to get this done, uh, how we do it logistically. So I throw that out for the commission to discuss. Yes. Can I just, can I just, can I just offer at least an idea with <laughs> the Farmington River Park? Um, one of the things Sharon was going to mention, um, if she could get on and share images, is um, the, the town um, leisure services got a, got, has already gotten one small grant from the Wild and Scenic Committee um, to do some trail mapping and to design kiosk signage in the park, in Farmington River Park. Well, that's good. That's so, so, so I'm just saying, you know, like for this specific situation, that that potentially could be a possibility. Right. So, and, and, and uh, I see Sharon's about to <laughs> sign in. So, just one more comment: this could also fit in with the larger and broader uh, project mission we suggested 
about improving the signage in town. So perhaps if this is a assigned to the park, then this will be a model for us to uh, identify other things in town that um, uh, could benefit from an artistic sign. So uh, I'll, uh, I'll be quiet and I think Sharon's here now. Oh, thank you. I've never had this happen before. <laughs> and just so you know, I've done my spiel, so. <laughs> yes, it's very creative. I have to be very creative from computer to computer. But hi, everybody. Um, I don't know how far you got. I have a little PowerPoint to show you. Um, can I, could you quickly bring me up to date on what you've talked about so I don't be redundant? I, sure, and I, I talked about the hats I wear. I talked about the long history of Native Americans in the area. I talked a little bit about the Wild and Scenic Committee. I did mention um, that Bloomfield got a small grant to do the kiosk signage. Okay. Um, so that's, that's a possible source of funding for a project like this. And I did mention that this is just conceptual and we're just, you know, okay. we're just starting out. So sure. And, and Sharon, um, if, if yeah. I may, just to add to Paula uh, very briefly, and it's primarily my opinions, but I think I saw a lot of commissioners nodding their heads. This fits in with some of the uh, discussion we're having as an arts commission anyway, for some of our projects to um, uh, recognize various uh, groups within town, you know, in addition to Black Lives Matter, lots of other groups. And also we'd like to uh, potentially uh, endorse improving uh, signage around town. So this okay. could be something that could be an early project for that. And uh, uh, so it, it overlaps and coincides with a lot of things we want to encourage anyway, very okay. receptive. That's great. Yeah. Um, so my question was to start with, it, how many of you have been to the Farmington River Park? Um, Two, three, great. Okay, I know Paula's been there. Bob, have you been to the- uh... I haven't, I had to ask directions today. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but and I'll go he... looking for it. Okay, and is yeah. Bob there? Is Robert there? Bob, I, I don't know if he's there or not. I see his name, but um, it's really a beautiful park. It was uh, bought- Sorry, by Sharon, now. excuse me. Yes, I have been to the park. It's beautiful, oh, it's very beautiful. Okay, yeah. yeah I, I don't know if you were around, but in 1995, the park was bought by the, um, the existing town council at that time. And uh, so that was about 26 years ago. It has 78 acres and it borders a state park. And the, the, uh, as I understand it, the town council was very exciting about this because it would give us access to the Farmington River. So if I can share my screen, I will show you. Um, now, hopefully I have this here because when my computer, I had to restart my computer and let me see if I can find where I wanna be. Okay. All right, if you just hold one second. Okay, do you see that now? You can? Okay, yes, I can't. I can't hear you. Okay. So, uh, oops, hold on. Okay, so this is the Farmington River Park. Uh, it's a, uh, Paula can tell you more about the river, but it goes from all the way up past Northwest Park, which was always sort of, we've all talked about, oh, that would be nice to connect to that eventually someday. And it's a walking park. Lots of people walk their dogs there. It gets, it, it's, it's the kind of park that people know about, but they don't want to tell anybody about because not, not as many people go to this park as the other parks. Um, this is the park. And uh, this is sort of a panoramic picture to give you if you haven't been there a feeling about it. So this is the main road here and it has a gate across. So that is really more primarily for the DPW to come in and cut the lawns and the uh, uh, further up and trim trees and things like that. Here, and, I'm yeah. still looking at the panoramic. Yeah, that's okay. On, I, can you see my arrow? Do you see my arrow pointing to the kiosk? No. No, we can't see your mouse. We can only see the screen. Oh, you can only see the screen. Okay. Well, pretend I'm a mouse and go towards the middle of the screen and you'll see a brown kind of roof. That's the existing kiosk right now. And that picture is recent because in the last few weeks, 
the DPW and the BBC and the Leisure Services, who is where the project came in and did plantings um, based on the grant that uh, Paula talked about, the Hartford Audubon Society gave the BBC a thousand dollar grant to put in native plantings that were bird friendly. So there, if you can see the tall dark tree behind the um, handicap sign, that and the one further back, those were there. They were covered in vines and poison ivy. And I believe they're Eastern cedars. I look at them and say they're used, but they're unusual. And we cleaned them up and then all planted around them on either side where you see the pea stone um, are native plantings. Um, the DPW trucks are there. Sharon, uh, sorry to interrupt, but we're all, I think, uh, uh, on the same message, we're not seeing any of those details that you mentioned, like uh, oh, you can't handicap see sign. Oh, you, uh, can't, can you see this sign now? We're, we're on the first slide, Sharon. We're on the first slide, which is just the, uh, the river, the shore, a tree okay. sticking out of the water. Oh, really? Uh, and that's so all I'm we showing can see. you all these pictures and you're not seeing No, them. we're not Correct. seeing any of that. Okay. Uh, so what maybe you need that? to scroll through some of the other slides. I don't know. Can well, you do that, yeah I'm slideshow? Be, so yeah, Sharon, the only on. it looks like the only thing you shared was your PowerPoint show. So if you're on any other, if you're like on your internet, like through Google or something, we're not seeing that. No, I'm um, on the you, PowerPoint, Sarah. So what should I you're do? You're still on your PowerPoint? Yes. Okay, can you click to the next image in your PowerPoint? Yes, I have been doing okay. Um, no, it's not moving for us. Sarah. Now it's not moving. Okay. Now, I moved one. Can you see that now? No. So it's not showing any of the. So, pictures. Sharon, I'm going to ask you to click out to stop share and then go back through and, and, and reshare. Okay. And I would not, I would choose to share your, your, um, your screen as opposed to just one thing because it's not going to let you show more than one, if that makes sense. So, and I'm not, exa I'm not sure exactly what the wording is when you do it. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. Well, the, that's what I had to show were those pictures. So let me see if I can show one picture at a time. Um, so when you go, yeah. Okay, now what can you see? Oh, yeah, now, now it's working. Now it's yep. moving. Yeah, okay. okay, good. Okay. So I had it in slideshow. Maybe I won't keep it in slideshow. We'll just go through it. Yep. Okay, so now you see the hiker. Yep, right? Okay. Right, now we've got it. Oh, let's see, okay. Yeah. So now you see that picture you saw before. Did you see that picture before? The one that shows the panoramic view? No. Okay. No, we haven't seen any of this, Sharon. Okay. Just take right. us through them quickly. <laughs> All right. Here we go again. Yeah. Thank you for joining us at the Farmington River Park. So to your left is a road with a uh, gate that goes all the way down to the uh, area of the park where a pavilion is being planned and a building is being demolished. Right now, the area we're concentrating on is right here off of the driveway. You'll see in the center of the picture, like a little beige roof. That's a kiosk that has nothing on it right now. And it has a utility pole behind it. And in the last few weeks, we've done some redesign of the area. So here you see the kiosk, and this was in January of this year. Um, but now, I understand you can't see my pointer, but behind the kiosk is a there's the utility pole as it exists right now. And this is what we brought you, we wanted to show to you, uh, a concept for um, an art piece for there that we feel would um, be an, ex you know, an artistic expression um, for the park and for a public space, they're recycling found materials. And so also at the same time, this kiosk is being designed with two, you, I heard you talking about signs. So I'm going to show you the new sign planned for the front of this kiosk. And if we were to move forward with the concept for the back of uh, the back of the sign would also have a display sign that would relate to the art 
art piece in the center, which is the utility pole. The plaques that are underneath the kiosk right now, they are plaques that tell, you know, this was awarded to the town in 1995, et cetera. Nobody looks at those. So we've moved them since then and repositioned them in a place where people now will look at them. Um, okay, so this is the new trail. Um, it, the, it's totally different. It has a pea stone walk. You can see that the pole is now very dominant in the area. Where you see these cones, that's where a new bicycle rack is going in. And it goes behind the kiosk. And in front of the kiosk, which I'll show you, to go very slow here. Okay, so here you can see on either side of this sign are plantings. And the, the goal of the plantings are <clears throat> that they're seasonal, there's plants that have berries, there's seasonal plants that are fragrant, there's always going to be something happening there. And, the, and it's not the goal of the BBC or the DBW to have to do high maintenance here. So the goal is that all the plants will eventually grow together and be like um, an area you walk through and is bird friendly at the same time, as I said before. So here's where you can see the bike rack up in the air. The guys are going to put it in and they're putting it to the side. The reason I point this out is I wanted you to always see where the pole is. So a pole is always has a dominant place in this um, design. So here is, oops, sorry, I have to just move this. So here is the signage that's going in on the front side of the um, kiosk. This is the Farmington River Park. Um, a map is, uh, Davis had a map made which um, details the park. And I don't know if you can see this, if it's large enough. I always think, can you see that? Is it big enough for you to see? Is that, can you see that now? You can see that. Um, so these are the animals and the birds that uh, occupy space in the park and the river. And we're, we design new trail markers. So down at the bottom in the dark green panel are three trail markers that will indicate the orange trail, the white trail and the blue trail. And then Paula can tell you a little bit about the white signage, which is the lower Farmington and Salmon Brook logo. Yeah, and if, if I can just come in, Sharon, this, sure. this, this, the, the new map that you see on the right hand side um, and the signage was what was funded by the small grant from the, from the Wild and Scenic Committee. The logo on the bottom is the new logo for this Wild and Scenic Committee um, for the Lower Farmington River. So, so here's the kind of a conceptual of how the sign is going to look. Uh, right now, we're in the process of uh, Dave is having the kiosks repaired and uh, it's metal structure, but the wood and stuff had sort of disintegrated. So that will be repaired. And the goal is to have the sign up, hopefully within the next couple of months, depending on the weather. And then all the area you see where the snow is and behind the, the sign, that's all going to be a bluestone walk way. Uh, we saved the bluestone that was at part of the house with beautiful four foot pieces of bluestone four by three. And we saved all that and we're going to recycle it into a, a, a walkway. And then all of the materials that for the trees that were cleaned up, that was made into wood chips and that was used to, for the mulch for the area. So here is the concept that we're talking about for possibly an art installation. And I know this doesn't seem to me very big and I'd really like to put it on the screen. So I'm, I'm gonna try this, but then I'm hoping I could go back, Sarah, and put it up on the screen share to see if it'll be larger and fill the whole screen. So I can't tell how much you can see, um, but this is a concept to do an art installation of the utility post making use of um, something that relates to the Native Americans who, fished and lived along the river, the Farmington River. 
um, I'm sure Paula told you they live, people have lived there since 10,000 years ago. And so part, half of the sign would relate to that and talk about it. And the other part of the sign would deal with uh, what native plants are planted uh, along the trail. And um, a little bit of mention of the National Audubon Society for the grant. So here's the poll. It, you can see that coming out of the park, it's really very striking and um, there's no utilities on it. It's just a pole now. All electricity has been removed from the site, doesn't connect to the, to the park anymore. So there is no power there. And I put the little uh, display in so you could sort of get an idea of how the sign would look as you walk out. And where that orange cone is, that would be where the bicycle rack is, but it's far enough away from the kiosk so that you can see the sign too. Now you're probably wondering, you see these, you, I, I keep wanting to point with my arrow. Um, there are these boulders and the boulders are there to keep the AT, um, the vehicles from driving into the park that way. And I've also been in touch with a company, a local business, and they're going to donate some more boulders to us. And I just have to show you this because I'm so proud about it. The center plant in the middle of the uh, walkways between the two X's, that's a rhododendron that was in the house next to the golf course. And when they tore that down, I got to go over there and look and see if there was anything we could save. And so that was saved and the DPW planted it. So it brings us down to the art installation. And um, Paula, did you want to say anything else about that and the concept? Well, I, I, I talked about the concept, Sharon, um, okay. I did, because it took you a little while to get in. So yeah, I, I, yeah. I mentioned the history the connection to the fact that we want to, um, you know, one of the things we want to make available to people in the park is fishing. And the first fishermen in Connecticut were Native Americans. So it ties in that way as well. Okay. And on our sign, the fish you see, those are trout. And that's what's one of the type of fish that are in the water of the Farmington River. So um, I think that, so that, that concludes our discussion if you have any questions. I'm going to try to put this up on top. This is great, Sharon. Thanks so much. I mean, I before you joined, and I think Bob mentioned this as well, you know, I mean, to me, it seems like this really fits the mission, vision, and goals of the public art policy and the work that we're set out to do. Um, I, I think this is really great. Um, I'm a canoeer. Um, I'm a canoeist. So I, I, I'm excited to eventually <laughs> have a boat launch there. Um, and, We're working on it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> My husband and I are, are very excited about that. But um, so I, I definitely appreciate this project very much. Well, I think one of the things that we've talked about, I, I know, it, I think it's in the plan, Paula's, um, the plan that the... Um, Leisure Services has is having benches to sit along the river, the river. And I mean, you know, I, I think I saw in your minutes that that was one of the things of having benches painted, uh, possibly with designs, and it, we could have a contest that a motif is the Native Americans, and they're all different, but they still are same, same, but different, you know, they relate to the theme of the park. Um, another concept. Listen, I'll, I'll add my voice again. And um, uh, it, as you're well aware, Sharon, because you've been involved in even before we set up an arts commission, uh, it, this is both a wonderful project. And uh, I, I think, and I think other commissioners uh, have nodded their heads, uh, one that's easily doable, you know, uh, before we try to tackle a, a hundred thousand dollar sculpture in the middle of town in front of the library. Uh, we're trying to accomplish some, uh, some small projects that uh, are meaningful, but, but easily realized to say, hey guys, uh, we're an arts commission and we're promoting art in town and here's some things we're doing. So this is, I think fits, as Amanda said, very much into um, uh, what, what our current view is of, of getting, our hands, getting our hands dirty, getting started. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate the visuals. These are really good. <laughs> the, the, you know, just to see what the, 
you know, the new path looks like and what it could look like. And it, it it's really helpful to, to see that um, before we all make a journey down there. Um, what we did discuss, Sharon, uh, just very briefly before you, uh, before you joined us is it would be an opportunity to perhaps put out a, a short and, you know, and I mean short time-wise, a solicitation for uh, art proposals for this uh, mm -hmm. and maybe build from that to um, uh, similar kinds of things as we do other signage or projects or, as you said, decorating fences. And we would set up a model for, uh, for putting out a, a request for art proposals. Uh, so this, this is uh, something that we could cut our teeth on also. Well, um, I was wondering if our proposal to you for this concept, if we came to you because we would like to know if we can flush this out more and define it, um, if that's a possibility, or, or are you saying you would rather send it out to um, other people? To oh, no, to, to the contrary. Uh, and I'm only speaking as one commissioner, but no, I think we would like to get... Uh, involved with it, what I was saying is part of our process would be okay. uh, to put out a solicitation for uh, proposals for what mm -hmm. the artwork should be. You know, okay. I mean, your, your uh, interim uh, 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 drawing is, is lovely, but we probably want to involve uh, some other artists in town. And particularly, uh, I would like to suggest to the commission that maybe we ask to solicit, if possible, any uh, Native Americans mm -hmm. uh, in town who would contribute to the actual art. But I, I would be very much in favor of embracing this and when it's the right time to perhaps have a, a, a resolution uh, that this is a project we will, we will uh, support and endorse. So yeah, very much uh, in, okay. in our wheelhouse. Oh, good, because it's our intention that we would want you know, exactly what you're saying. The poll is there to be, you know, um, for people to make proposals for. The display on the kiosk, those are already done. Um, oh, I understood, of course. Yeah, so, but, but to blend them together is what we were excited about. And that if you like that concept and finding artists and Native Americans who would be interested in, you know, being part of this process, I think is very exciting and makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Paula, you have your hand up. Yeah, and, and uh, thank you for that opening, Bob, <laughs> because um, in terms of the Wild and Scenic Committee right now, um, next month, th actually this, yeah, next month, January, is when we're doing um, kind of focused work on this year's work plan and next year's budget. Um, but I mean, we we have some money from the national from the from the feds um, to spend, and so this is kind of an opportunity to maybe see if there's an appetite for funding of this kind of project. And my guess is is there will be you know people will be excited about it. Um, the National Park Service is very keen on promoting projects that um, promote equity, <laughs> um, that um, certainly would be um, inclusive of like the Native American community. And so, you know, I think there's going to be discussion about that and trying to accomplish that kind of on a regional basis with the towns along the river. So, you know, the timing is good for all of this in terms of feedback that I can that I can potentially bring to the commission um, you know as well as you know potential sources of funding for the project so um, I'm not promising anything but you know this is I think something that will excite people and Paula what what type of information would you need from us let's say if like what would the that uh, what would the wild and scenic committee need in terms of you know what's the process of funding for that um, Generally, there's there we're, we're talking about categories like sponsorships. We're talking there, there's small grants um, that are available. Um, in the case of a small grant, somebody just needs to put in a grant application, 
that could be the town. You know, it's generally a town or a nonprofit or school. Um, and certainly if the Arts Commission were to put in a letter of support and talk about how this fit in with what your charge is and what your mission is and what you're trying to promote, you know, that would be very helpful. You know, that, that, would, be, that, would, that would be great. Uh, two comments. One, I'd like to, uh, 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 Amanda and I have spoken. I wonder if Leslie or, or Bob Ike want to comment. And I'd like to make a, a suggestion that perhaps we could uh, 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 adopt a, a broad and non-binding uh, resolution uh, today to further explore this and, and you know, not to Get into oh, you make a no motion, Mr. Fricker. What's sorry, that? I make a motion that we proceed. I make a motion that we proceed with a non-binding resolution uh, to move ahead with this proposed project. That's my motion on the floor. Wonderful. Uh, I'll second that. Uh, any any <laughs> comments from anyone else? Anything, Leslie? I think it's a great idea. I love it. I'm exciting. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Thank you. Very excited yeah. about it. So I guess all those in favor, right? Well, before we take a vote, I, I would just like to throw out a, another item. Um, okay. Some or all of you may know that um, the Roberts Foundation, uh, which is a, a source I've always uh, had my eye on when we are eligible, uh, their particular mission is uh, a public art in, in public space. Uh, not not in galleries or museums per se, but uh, in the Art League in West Hartford has utilized them in, in that. So uh, they may be someone we could go to and get uh, some additional uh, funding on this. And that would be a very exciting way to connect with them initially. So uh, let's let's put that on our agenda as well. Yeah, and I wanted to say that um it's very exciting that I just discovered that there's another um, Hartford Audubon grant available and it's only a thousand dollars. And because we had one last year, we, we are still uh, qualified for another one this year. So we could apply for that because we still have some goals to do some more work. And, but we haven't talked about how it relates, you know, to art and stuff. So this is good to blend it. And I was going to tell you, Amanda, when you asked about um, applying for grants, we learned uh, last year how important it is for groups to partner with each other, you know, in the town, the leisure services, the beautification, the CEC, the public arts, the library, you know, all coming together shows uh, these people who give out grants that everyone is interested in making something happen. And, and we found that to be important. And I think Paula, the other thing was, is we definitely have to go through the town manager and Elizabeth and all the people who give approval for grants. So right. that um, that's something that they've talked about creating some kind of policy on grants. And I don't know how far that's gotten, but. Yeah. just to, to give that up front. Yes. Well, I, I would call the question if there's any other comment, but uh, uh, Robert Ike's uh, resolution and- Yeah. All right, so then can we go to a vote then? Yes. All right, great. So all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Aye. Any opposed? All right. That's all of us. So the motion passes to explore this further without a, a I, I don't know exactly how Robert said it. Um, Leslie, I think, had written it down or Elizabeth. But um, so in a non-binding um, agreement to um, further research this. So I think as a committee, um, or as a commission, we need to just figure out what our next steps are and kind of delegate out what who's going to look into what if there's anything we need to start looking into and then, you know, partnering, of course, with Sharon and Paula on um, how we can make this a collaborative effort. And uh, one thing just to put in the, our minutes uh, for the day, uh, I believe Paula said at a minimum, 
it would be helpful uh, for them uh, to have some sort of letter of support or endorsement or something formal in writing from our commission. So I would propose not as a resolution, but as a discussion that when we pursue this, we uh, keep that in mind, that we give them some uh, uh, tangible support in, in writing uh, that they could use to go out uh, to grant makers. Great. Excellent. Um, I mean, I'm happy to put together a few things just from my own professional practice of doing um, arts administration as a, a career. I can pull together some just project setup things for how I've done calls for artists and stuff. Um, yeah, and I'll, I'll share that with the group. Um, you know, of course, nothing that we have to use completely, but we can at least something to start the conversation, right? Cool. All right. Um, so that's great. Thank you. Um, thank, you. thank you, Paula. Thank you, Sharon. This is okay. really excellent. It's an exciting first thing to think about as a, a project for, for us as a commission. This is excellent. wonderful. Thank, thank you for your time. Thank you. Yeah, sorry, I was late. <laughs> All good. All good. All right. Great. Um, well, the next thing on, should we move on to the next thing on our um, yes. agenda here? All right. So we've got meeting schedule for 2022. Elizabeth sent out an email um, about it. Something that went out to all the, the commissions. So um, looking at what dates we can't have. Um, Elizabeth, anything you want to share about meeting yes. schedule? For it would be nice if we could agree on a schedule. If we agree today um, and we vote on it, I will put it in written format and forward that on to the town clerk's office so that it will be uh, made available on the public calendar um, and such. Great. So the way that we have it set up right now, am I correct in saying it's the last Wednesday of the month at 3.30 p.m. has been what we've been using? Okay. Um, so I guess we need to decide on whether or not we're going to keep that or if we want to amend it for 2022? With knowing so, that we can always so, cancel a meeting if needed. So we're putting it out, but if the commission felt that there was a meeting that was extraneous and or we needed a meeting in between those states, we could always have a special meeting. May I bring up something mm -hmm. now and it may be a collateral or it could be part of this. And we'll have a resolution on this. Uh, as a matter of, especially because we're a small group and so maintaining a quorum is always a challenge. Uh, many uh, commissions in town have an attendance requirement, which is that you're required to attend, say, all but X, you know, two meetings a year without, without prior excuse. So, you know, if you're out of town on vacation or uh, you're, you're ill or whatever, your conflict, uh, if you notify the chair in advance that uh, is an excused absence, but people who don't attend... Uh, going forward, um, I, I would just throw out, say, uh, t two meetings uh, during the year, we would have to review their membership on, on the, the commission. Just so, as I said, we um, keep kind of a, a tight hold on the fact that we, we require a, a quorum of a very small group uh, to, uh, to get anything done. So I throw that out on the floor. Yeah. All right, so I think, Bob, Robert Ike, you were trying to jump in, I think. Yeah, I, make, I, I so moved, I moved the motion with, the, with necessary corrections and amendments for the, for the meeting schedule. All right. Um, and do we want to add the attendance requirement? Or we can make that a separate I, policy. I, and I accept that with the uh, as part of the um, as part of the uh, motion that we proceed with the schedule as presented with all the necessary uh, amendments and corrections as noted by the commission members, which would include your policy, your 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 suggestion, Bob, for a strict attendance because we are such a small group for the quota purposes because we have to have a quota and once you're a town commission you have to have a quota in order to conduct business. If you don't have a yes. quota, you can't officially discuss business to conduct right. business right. or Thank take you. votes. They're binding. 
and as a matter of fact, before this meeting, um, Elizabeth uh, let me know uh, just informally when we talked about other things uh, that several people would not be attending today. And if we hadn't had four people show up, we actually couldn't have had the meeting today. So um, I, I, you've moved the motion and I second it and uh, up for discussion. Can, what is the, did we decide on what the requirement would be in terms of attendance? So Leslie has that clear for the minutes? Well, I would, I would put out there subject to people's comment, uh, no more than two unexcused absences uh, in a year and okay. excused absences don't count. So if you're sick or out of town and notify the chair in, or vice chair in advance, uh, then uh, you're in compliance. So no more than two unexcused absences in a year. And by the way, this, uh, there's another group which I have a meeting in, um, in an hour, uh, the Hartford Foundation uh, uh, group for Bloomfield. And we actually did have to have uh, two people removed from our group at the end of the year because they weren't attending. So it, it's not a hypothetical, it, you know, it does happen. All right, any further discussion? All right, all those in favor, I guess, yep. Yeah. Aye. Right. Aye. Aye. Right. Aye. Any, so no opposed, um, so that, that motion passes then. Um, so we will continue to meet in 2022 on the last Wednesday of the month at 3.30 p.m. We'll make adjustments to the schedule as needed um, and attendance requirement will be um, two unexcused absences um, is the maximum. All right, great. Thank you all for that. And um, all right, the next thing we have, um, if there's anything we wanted to address in the Public Art Commission policy breakdown, um, I don't know if anybody had anything to chime in on with that. All right, next is future meetings. So our next meeting will be the last Wednesday of January, which I'm checking my calendar real quick um, to get that date here. Let's see. So that means January 26. Thank you, Elizabeth. Yes. January 26 at 3.30. Um, are there any agenda items that we want to add to that? I guess we'll want to talk further about this utility poll. Um, let's see. And I'll put together some, like I mentioned, just some admin type of stuff um, for getting that rolling. Um, I'll share it in the Google Docs um, folder. All right, any other agenda items we wanna add so far? I mean, we can always touch in with um, Elizabeth as well. All right, then our last thing on here is approval of minutes from December 1st. So I'm going to ask that we take oh, that man. in that uh, I have a question into the town attorney about something I received about the minutes. So until we hear from him, uh, I would like to table that until January 26th. Okay. All right, so do we need like a motion for that or anything? Any of my Robert's rules? <laughs> I don't think no, so. No, we're, yeah. we're good. Okay. And, good. and for the record, Elizabeth, without going into too much detail, uh, uh, it, you mentioned it to me that this was not on your initiative, but it was on advice of uh, town, uh, uh, you know, whatever, <laughs> officials, yeah. authorities, that we uh, we table the minutes until uh, this question is resolved. So, uh, for everyone's benefit, uh, this is this is being explored. Cool. Okay. All right. So we'll table the minutes until January. And our last piece on here is public comment. And I don't see anybody else in here. Elizabeth, is there anyone else? To there is no one else. Okay. Great. Well, that concludes our agenda. All right. Uh, thank you, Amanda and Elizabeth, for 
running a wonderful meeting. I think we got a lot done and uh, I would move that we adjourn. Second. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Aye. Everyone have a happy new year. Yes. Great, happy great new meeting everyone. everyone. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Happy new year. All right. See you next